Hello everyone, my name is Emma Mohamad and I am the director of the UKM UNICEF C40 Centre for Health or better known as Healthcom. My name is Jun Kim, Head of Communication for Development at UNICEF Foundation. Healthcom exists to advocate for the recognition of C4D as a strategic approach for social and behavioural change in public health. Communication for Development, also known as Social and Behaviour Change Communication, is a core UNICEF programmatic strategy. We hope to create a future of an empowered public health ecosystem that appreciates inclusive health communication for the health and well-being of our society. But what is C4D? It's an evidence-based process that applies social and behavior science into strategy and implementation to promote the adoption of positive behaviors. In order to support and enable a conducive environment for the implementation of C4D in public health, the Center will focus on curriculum development, training and research on social behavioral change communication. It's about understanding how people make decisions and how social norms influence their decisions and applying the evidence into the design of policy and practices for better health and social outcomes. We hope that our C4D curriculum and training will strengthen capacity building, guiding public health providers in utilizing strategic communication to develop impactful health and intervention programs for different communities. And support their journey to become a center of excellence for social and behavior change communication. Our research at Healthcom is focused to help provide insights and recommendations to the government and policymakers to create a supportive healthcare system that can lead to the improvement of health literacy in Malaysia. I'm very confident that our partnership with UKM will help strengthen the contribution of communications in public health and beyond. With strong support from UNICEF, we believe that Healthcom can achieve this goal and become a strong partner in the public health ecosystem to foster a stronger and healthier Malaysia. Very makasi. Thank you very much. Healthcom C4D Communication for a Difference. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mention 2021 community. For today's event, Health Call will be officially launched and we will be conducting our workshop right after the launch event. So sit tight and we hope you enjoy the event. Without taking much of your time, we are now presenting a pre recorded speech by Sarah Norton Stahl. Chief of Child Protection and Acting Deputy Representative, UNICEF Malaysia. For your information, Sarah Norton Stahl is representing Dr. Rashid Mustafa Sarwa, UNICEF Representative to Malaysia for the speech. Good morning, everyone. Yang Burbakhia, Professor Dato Dr. Mohammed Ekwan Haj Toriman, the Vice Chancellor at University Kabang Sang Malaysia, and other UKM C4D UNICEF fellows. Welcome to today's event. Salamat pagi and salam sajatara. It gives me great pleasure to be here today for the launch of the UKM UNICEF C4D Healthcom Center against the backdrop of University Kabang Sang Malaysia's 17th biennial international conference on media and communication. The theme of the conference, media and communication in the new norm, challenges and global issues, is both apt and timely as the world's population and in particular children have faced many great challenges during this long and grueling COVID-19 pandemic. As the biggest child rights organization in the world, UNICEF works hard to leave no child behind 
as we slowly but very surely make our way out of the pandemic. All around the world, UNICEF has used the power of communication to promote child survival, development, protection, and participation. One of the core strategies in doing so is through communication for development, also known as social behavior change communication. Communication for development is a systematic, planned, and evidence-based strategic process that applies social and behavioral science to promote the adoption of positive behaviors in a community. It is a two-way communication process which listens to individuals and communities to understand how they make decisions in order to design policy and interventions which meet their needs for better social outcomes. C4D approaches have been used to successfully eradicate polio, improve childhood nutrition, reduce maternal mortality, delay child marriage for girls, and promote hand washing among children to reduce childhood illnesses, <coughs> all of which would not have been possible without addressing behavior change at the individual level. As an upper middle income country, UNICEF Malaysia invests in building the institutional C4D capacity of government and academic institutions to conduct quality C4D planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation at the national and subnational levels that is sustainable and scalable. For that, we are very pleased to partner with University of Bangsan Malaysia, UKM. As a leading public research university in health communication, UKM is well positioned to drive evidence-based social and behavior change communication in Malaysia. UKM's strong links to the federal government and civil society organizations, along with the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, long-standing health communication work with the Ministry of Health, are key comparative advantages. It takes strong partnerships such as this with academic institutions, government agencies, and civil society organizations to truly drive sustainable and positive social and behavior change in line with our Sustainable Development Goals 2030 Agenda. In conclusion, we believe that the establishment of the UKM UNICEF C4D Center is a positive and firm step in this direction and will pave the way for developing people-oriented solutions, research and policies that will reimagine a better world for every child. UNICEF is proud to have a partner that shares our goals and vision in UKM, and we look forward to continued collaborations and the success of the HealthCom C4D Center. Thank you, and have a great morning. We appreciate the inspiring speech given by Sarah Norton Stoll. Now we are presenting our pre-recorded speech by UKM Vice Chancellor, Professor Dato Technologist, Dr. Muhammad Ekwan Haji Toriman, who will then officiate Healthcom UKM at UNICEF Center. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Yang berusaha Dr. Rashid Mustafa Sarwar, Wakil United Nations Children's Fund atau UNICEF ke Malaysia dan Wakil khas ke Brunei. Yang berbahagia Prof. Dr. Hajar Hazita Azman, Dekan Fakulti Sains Sosial dan Kemanusiaan UKM. Prof. Madya Dr. Emma Mirzawati Muhammad, Pengarah Pusat Komunikasi untuk Pembangunan C4D Kesihatan Health Comms, Fellow-Fellow Pusat Komunikasi untuk Pembangunan Kesihatan Health Comms serta hadirin dan hadirat yang saya hormati sekalian. Syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala kerana dengan limpah kurnianya dapat kita bersama-sama hadir secara maya di Majlis Perasmian Pusat Komunikasi untuk Pembangunan Kesihatan atau Health Comms. UKM amat berbangga dengan kerjasama dengan UNICEF dalam penubuhan pusat komunikasi untuk pembangunan kesihatan HealthCom ini. Inisiatif murni ini lahir dari persamaan hasrat dan aspirasi UKM dan UNICEF 
untuk meningkatkan kualiti kesihatan dan kesejahteraan masyarakat khususnya kepada generasi muda. Sebagai industri watan, UKM memegang amanah untuk membantu negara dalam menyediakan ekosistem yang kondusif untuk masa hadapan menerusi pendidikan dan penyelidikan yang mampu memberi impak kepada anak bangsa. Kerjasama strategik ini memperkasa bidang sains sosial dalam kesihatan khususnya menerapkan ilmu komunikasi dalam merancang perubahan tingkah laku sosial kesihatan yang berkesan dan lestari. Penubuhan Pusat Healthcom adalah satu lagi usaha UKM dalam mendukung perancangan Sustainable Development Goals atau SDG Satuan Bangsa-Bangsa Bersatu bagi mencapai agenda global bersama. Secara khususnya, Pusat Healthcom akan menyumbang dalam sekurang-kurangnya tiga agenda SDG iaitu SDG 3 di bawah Good Health and Wellbeing, SDG 4, Quality Education dan SDG 17. Partnership for the Goals. Sebagai universiti yang bertaraf antarabangsa, ia menjadi kepentingan bagi UKM untuk sentiasa bergerak selari dengan tuntutan global yang akan membawa kepada kebaikan sejagat. Pengalaman dan kepakaran selama 15 tahun menjadi research university ataupun universiti penyelidikan dengan rekod prestasi penyelidikan yang cemerlang pastinya menjadi aset dan tawaran UKM kepada kolaborasi bersama UNICEF ini. Saya yakin Pusat Healthcom bukan saja akan aktif dalam penjanaan penerbitan melalui penyelidikan mereka tetapi juga memberi manfaat kepada masyarakat menerusi pembentukan modul, latihan dan program intervensi tingkah laku yang mampu membawa perubahan positif yang berkekalan. Adalah menjadi harapan saya menerusi kerjasama ini Pusat Healthcom bakal menjadi pusat rujukan serantau dalam komunikasi kesihatan bagi meningkatkan kesejahteraan masyarakat terutamanya untuk kanak-kanak dan generasi muda. Dengan lafaz yang mulia Bismillahirrahmanirrahim saya dengan ini merasmikan Pusat UKM dan UNICEF Komunikasi untuk Perubahan Kesihatan Healthcom Sekian wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We thank Professor Dato Technologist Dr. Muhammad Ekwan Haji for his officiating speech. Moving on, we have now launched our very own website www.ukm.my slash healthcom that is readily accessible for everyone to browse. Link to the website will be provided in the check box. Ladies and gentlemen, we are over the moon to share the healthcom corporate video. We hope you enjoy the video. Kita sering mengambil ringan potensi komunikasi dalam perubahan tiga pelaku kesihatan. Hakikatnya, ramai antara kita sedar akan risiko kesihatan di sekeliling tetapi tidak terdorong untuk mengambil tindakan. Sebagai contoh, semua orang boleh masak ikut resipi tapi tak semua masakan akan menjadi. Kenapa agaknya? Kualiti bahan, pengalaman, minat, kesungguhan, seni dan naluri merupakan kunci kepada penghasilan masakan yang disukai ramai. Sama juga dengan mesej kesihatan, ia perlu ada elemen-elemen yang sama dengan komunikasi yang mampu mengubah tingkah laku. Kami di Pusat Symphony UKM Himself percaya bahawa kami berupaya untuk membantu anda merangka mesej dan program intervensi kesihatan yang berkesan menerusi pembangunan modul, latihan dan juga penyelidikan berkaitan dengan C4D. Anda ada resepi dan kami ada kemahiran. Bersama kita mampu menghasilkan.
Now, before getting to our break, we would like for all the participants to open your camera for a brief photo session. Okay, ready? One, two, smile. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, the photo is done. Kanisha, you can proceed with the next part. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We are now done with our launching ceremony. I hope everyone's having a good time so far. We're going to have a five minutes break. And after the break, we will start our communication for development T4D and health training workshop that will be conducted by Dr. Emma and Dr. Anis.
Tells me to stop feeling feelings I feel about us. Try to fight it, but it's never enough. My heart is hurting, it's more than a crush. 'Cause I'm frozen in motion, and my head tells me to stop. But my heart goes. Tells me to stop feeling feelings I feel about us. Try to fight it, but it's never enough. My heart is hurting, it's more than a crush. 'Cause I'm frozen in motion, and my head tells me to stop, but my heart goes. We welcome all participants to the first part of the Telecom Workshop, which will be conducted by Associate Professor Dr. Emma Mirzawati Mohammed. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Very good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Kanisha, uh, for emceeing this morning. and. Uh, we hope you all uh, had a good uh, session since morning at the launch of our conference mention and also the launch of Healthcom, which uh, I'm very pretty, uh, very excited about. Um, and throughout this uh, two days, we will be doing a workshop on C4D uh, for health uh, together with uh, you know, the Healthcom team as well as the team in UNICEF. Um, and uh, we hope that you all will stay, stay throughout uh, the, this two day sessions with us and enjoy uh, because we have actually planned, uh, you know, a pretty good, uh, pretty exciting um, group work and exercises for you all to do. Uh, so that is, is, is going to be an engaging uh, session with all of you. Um, firstly, uh, maybe let me just... Uh, can I have uh, Tanika to share my PowerPoint? Let me just check. If not, then I can do it. Never mind, I can do it as well. No worries. Let me just share. Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Saxi. So, um, yep, can we go to the next slide? So I see that there's uh, quite a bit of you here um, who uh, have selected this, uh, this workshop um, compared to the other five other workshops that's being offered uh, in the, this conference. So I'm assuming that all of you are very interested with health communications. Uh, at least are very interested to uh, learn more about uh, social behavior change communications uh, in health. And um, can you go to the next slide? So this session will be uh, conducted um, by two trainers. And um, can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, there'll be two trainers. Um, me and Dr. Arina Anis Aslan from Healthcom. 
And uh, we also have five facilitators who will be assisting uh, all of you today, today and tomorrow um, with um, you know, some activities that we have planned. Um, so maybe uh, what I'll do now is uh, have a little bit of a um, introduction of all our um, trainers as well as our facilitators for today. Uh, I'll start. Uh, my name is Emma Muhammad and I am the uh, director of HealthCom. Uh, UKM UNICEF uh, uh, Communication T40 Center for Health and uh, I'm also the chair at the uh, Center for Research in Media and Communications here in UKM. Dr. Anis. Hi everyone, um, my name is Dr. Anis. I'm the deputy director at HealthCom UKM UNICEF uh, C4D Center. I'm also a senior lecturer at Mansion. Uh, Center for Research in Media and Communication at UKM. So welcome everyone. Thank you, Dr. Anis. Uh, can we have um, our facilitators uh, team uh, to begin with Sakti? Assalamualaikum everyone and very good morning. Uh, I'm Andi Mamatri Sakti, but you can call me Sakti. I am a PhD student in University Kebangsaan Malaysia, majoring in health communication. At the same time, I'm also serving as graduate research assistant in UKM UNICEF C4D Center. Thank you. Thank you, Sakti. Uh, can I invite Zaitun next? Hi, everyone. Assalamualaikum. My name is Siti Zaitun. I'm a research assistant at UKM UNICEF C4D Center. Thank you. Thank you, Zaitun. And we also have three people from UNICEF joining us as facilitators uh, in the two-day workshop. Uh, Liz, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Elizabeth. I'm the Communication for Development, or C4D, officer at UNICEF Malaysia. And it's a pleasure for us to be here today with you all. Uh, over to Sid. All right, uh, thanks, Liz. Um, hi, Ron. Uh, my name is uh, Sadat Jacqueline, but you can call me Sid. I'm an intern in the Communication for Development team at UNICEF Malaysia. Um, over to you, uh, Mamalina. Hi, Assalamualaikum. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Amalina Anwar. Um, you can call me Amalina. I am a child protection um, officer uh, with a focus of social norms with UNICEF. So I'm partly child protection, partly C4D here. Happy to be here with all of you. Over. Thank you very much, Amalina. So as you can see, we have a lineup of uh, you know um, trainers and facilitators who will be uh, in involved uh, actively in our two-day uh, workshop. So feel free to reach out to us, uh, you know, um, if you need any help or assistance uh, throughout. And uh, yeah, you can use you can uh, DM us personally on the chat box, or you can just you know put, uh, put in your questions in the chat box and. Uh, and then uh, and, uh, one of the facilitators can help and uh, read out all the questions. Um, yeah, okay, so that's us. Um, we are actually expecting around 30 participants uh, for the workshop, but I think we have a bit lesser than 30. So I think we have time to get to know uh, our participants um, for uh, today. And um, it would be really good if uh, everyone could can you go to the next slide, Sakti? Um, to go uh, to, to introduce yourself. So what I uh, am asking all of you to do is um, switch on a camera and introduce yourself in five seconds. So what I need you all to do is uh, state your name, where are you from, and one word to describe health or what health means to you, okay? But if you have more to write, Please just uh, you know put down on your on the chat box there. Then uh, you know we can pick up all your health statements and what health actually means to you. Uh, we we're just very interested to to know uh, you know this because we will be talking about health a lot in this workshop. Okay, all right. So um, I'll start with what health means to me. Um, health means uh, not working on the weekends because that is my me time. So I get to do the things that I love on the weekends. Okay. Um, can we, let me just go by the, um, yeah. 
how do I get, how do I go to here? You full screen. Okay. All right. So let me just start by calling Bambang. Bang. Bang, Bang. So you look like you're ready, already switched on the camera, ready to speak. Let's get to know you. Can we highlight Bambang? Bambang, you're on, uh, you're on mute. Yeah. Assalamualaikum and a happy good morning. Dr. Emma, Dr. Anis and I saw here uh, Mr. Andy, Mr. Sidas, Elizabeth and Amalina. Yeah, I'm Bambang Suhartono bin Muhammad Said. I'm Malaysian, okay? Only the name like Indonesian. <laughs> okay, I'm a final year student for uh, communication. My my studies is about film rep uh, representation, about the social issues. For me, the head is very interesting currently for our issues. My, I think my, my future for for next clip is maybe it's about health because it's very oh. currently issues. <laughs> thank you, the tema. I think that's all. <laughs> thank you very much, Bambang. Okay, thank all you. Right. So you're you're making film about health soon, yeah? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can we have the next person? Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Gayatri, would you like to go next? Gayatri? Okay, that's, let's just move to Nuru Aini. Hello. Hi. Hello, Emma. Hi. Hi. Yes, Hello. yes. Okay, sorry, because the, the technical disturbance, so I difficult to, to start the video. Well, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, according to me, help it means is everything because uh, help is a, a uh, priceless, yeah, priceless. So we should uh, take care of the help all the time in your life. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> the Gayatri, where are you from? I'm from University of Al Azhar, Indonesia, Jakarta, Jakarta. Okay. Right, so you're in Jakarta at the moment, yeah? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, uh, next, can we call, can I call this, uh, Kennedy? Can I call Kennedy? No? Uh, Nuraini, are you ready? That's me, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hi. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Aini Abu Shamsi. I'm a senior lecturer from University Malaya. Um, so one word to describe about health for me is pain-free. So there's dash in the middle. So that's one word. Pain-free. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, can I call... Um, uh, Dr. Sophia, Dr. Sharifah Sophia. <laughs> Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Emma. <laughs> so that I, I, I didn't change the background yet because the uh, problem with my PC. Okay, my name, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. Okay, my name is um, Dr. Sharifah Sophia. So day, you can call me Sophia. I'm from UPM, a senior lecturer from Department of Communication. Okay, help for me is um, getting an ideal week, maybe. Ideal <laughs> because, because I'm about reducing my weight currently. All right. All the best to you. <laughs> I'm following you, jumping. Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Uh, can I call next? Uh, Han, Han Donke. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself, Ken. Uh, hello. Good morning. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, um, yeah. 
Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Emmer. Um, uh, my, my name is Pandong Ke, a PhD student, um, uh, and I uh, come from China. Uh, so, uh, 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 <laughs> very uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, what does health mean to you, Pan? Um, uh, so, so, sorry, can, can you re repeat? What does health mean to you? Oh, health. Uh, of course, uh, if, if I want to complete the PhD, uh, I, I should keep my health. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Important. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ben. Okay. Uh, next, can I call Kennedy? You, you just uh, switching on your camera just now. Kennedy, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good morning. Morning. Uh, Kennedy here from uh, UMS, Center for Knowledge Promotion and Language uh, Learning. I was introduced or was uh, made aware of this uh, workshop from C4D UMS. Uh, so I'm interested in this uh, health communication, especially in Sabah <clears throat> during the uh, year one, two, and three, and foreseeable future, the, the general public needs um, better methods of uh, communication to, to make the public aware of, of the importance of, of uh, health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kennedy, all the way from Sabah. Okay, uh, can I call Saw? Saw, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, uh, my, name, uh, my name is Paul. Yeah, I'm a postgraduate student uh, from UKM, so Dr. Emma is my supervisor. So, uh, about the one word to, about the health for me is a strong, because uh, with a strong body or strong mindset or mental, then you can stay healthy in your life. Okay, yeah. so health is being strong mentally and also physically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Good to see that you are staying strong as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Next, can I call uh, Jamsari? Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera and salam Sabah Maju Jaya. I am Jamsari bin Hashim. I am a lecturer in the Center of Promotion, the Center for Promotion of Knowledge and Language Learning. One word to describe health is wealth. Yeah. To be wealthy okay. is to be healthy. <laughs> I think everybody would agree with you, Jamsari. Thank you very much. Uh. Thank All right. you so much. All right, can I call next uh, Salifu? Assalamu alaikum everyone. Alaikum salam. Uh, my name is Salfa Abdulaziz. I have a minimum specialization in development communication, otherwise known as C4D. I'm currently pursuing my master's at the International Islamic University in Malaysia. All and right. for me, health is wealth, just like my other brother said. <laughs> yes, health is wealth. Thank you very much, Alifu, for that uh, introduction. Can I have uh, the next Suguna? Just bear with us. We have a few more people to introduce themselves because I think it's very important to get to know everybody since we are in a smaller group. Um, Suguna, would you like to go and uh, introduce yourself? Okay, if not, uh, not yet. Uh, Lynn, if you're not ready, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Uh, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dong Chen I'm from China. I am a PhD student, and my supervisor is Dr. Emma. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, obviously, uh, the tema is bringing all the students in here. <laughs> um, okay, uh, thank, thanks, Lynn. Um, can I call next uh, Laraiba? Laraiba Abdul Rahman. Let me say hello. 
Yeah, hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm Larima Abdurrahman. I'm a bachelor's degree student from the Department of Communication, International Islamic University, Malaysia. I'm really happy to be here. For me, health is living a stress-free life. Like when you're less stressed, then I think that's health <laughs> to me. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with that. Like stress, you have to reduce stress to be healthy, right? Uh, thank you so much, Lara, for the introduction. Uh, can I call next, um, Jaswinder? Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Um, well, I was until June managing the um, UMS UNICEF C4D project uh, here in Sabah. Um, so just um, right now, I'm not doing anything, just waiting for things to move along. Uh, for me, health is empowerment. Yeah, good, good one word. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Jess. Thank you. All right, uh, next, I'd like to call Weilun. Hi, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. I'm Jiwei Lun, and I'm from China. I'm also a PhD student of UKM, and my supervisor is Dr. Nazmi, and my co-supervisor is Dr. Emma. And my field of interest is journalism. Uh, for me, health is the, keys, uh, is the key to success. And on the other hand, health is a significant topic of my thesis. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Elun. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Uh, I think uh, we have Madhu next. Madhu. Uh, good morning, Doctor. Sorry that I'm at all. I can't open my camera. All right. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, I'm a postgraduate post student in Mansion. So this cut how in one word, I guess it's priority. Good work. <laughs> yes, good work. Yeah. Always prioritize your health. Thank you very much, Madhu. Uh, did I miss anybody who hasn't uh, actually introduced themselves? I think I might have missed somebody. I think there's a risky here. Risky? Yes, Rizki Ram, Ram, Ramadani. Yes. Would you like to introduce yourself? I think these are one of the challenges of doing the online uh, workshop, right? Uh, <laughs> because of technical difficulties, but it's okay. I think, uh, is, do I have anybody else who hasn't introduced themselves and maybe um, we can probably get to know each other along the way uh, during the during the workshop. But what I, what I want to do um, uh, today in this session is um, uh, start with um, okay. All right. Um, so uh, we've done the uh, a proper introduction of everybody. So what I want uh, you guys to do next is to take a short test. Um, Tati will put the link on the chat box in the chat box. So please um, click the link and take this uh, this short test. So this short test is uh, you know it's a personality test. Don't worry, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just uh, getting to know you all better. And um, this will sort of uh, um, hope to break the ice. Um, so what you guys need to do is just go in the chat box. Let me see. Yes, uh, Alif already put in uh, the link to the chat uh, to the uh, test. Yes, correct. So uh, just click on that link and take the test. Um, and let us know in the chat box what's the result of your test, okay? So I think the test will take probably a few minutes, two, three minutes to take. Um, and then after you've gotten your results, just 
put down in the chat box and then we'll see what's the what's everybody's results like um i have actually taken this uh, test before but i've forgotten my results so let me just take the test again <laughs> together with all of you Okay, so put down in the chat box. I've actually finished mine. So let's see what everybody's results like. Okay, so Liz says her result is the lively sense of attention, which is mine as well. <laughs> okay, Amalina says, she is the natural leader. Okay, great. Jess is the, the careful plodder. Sid is the loyal friend. Same as Madhu. Nice. Okay, how about the rest? <laughs> Anis is the loyal friend as well. So we've got a mix here. Jansari is also loyal friend. So we've got loyal friendships in here. <laughs> oh, there's also another addition to the loyal friend. Noraini is also the loyal friend. So many loyal friends in this group. <laughs> what about the rest? Liz, looks like you're you're the only one with me. Let's put like the center of att attention, <laughs> the lively center of attention. <laughs> I know, right? We can't have too many of us in a room. <laughs> Gayatri says hers is neutral and loyal friend. Okay, also a loyal friend. We've got lots of loyal friends in here. What about the rest? Let's just wait for a couple more and see. Oh, so you're the lively center for attention, just like me. No wonder you are my supervisee. <laughs> oh, Kennedy as well. So Liz, we do have quite a bit of us here. <laughs> All right. Anyone else want to share? <laughs> yes, we must make sure that everybody is not in the same group or else nobody's getting the attention. Everybody <laughs> demands attention from everybody. <laughs> Azaita is as well, the lively center of attention. Okay, so we've got uh, quite a bit of 
the loyal friends in here and as well as the lively center of attention. Looks like Jess, you're the only one with the careful plodder in here. <laughs> and Amalina is the only one with the natural leader. Ah, oh, with Sakti, actually. Sakti and Amalina are the natural leaders in the group. Okay. So you guys must be leading the workshop later, yeah? <laughs> All right. Um, so the, I mean, you guys can uh, still uh, put down on the chat box as we go along. What's the result of your test? Um, but uh, we're just playing this uh, this this quiz just to show uh, to all of us that we are all different, um, and our characters are different. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, even though uh, we are friends or, or we we uh, we know each other, but our characters are different. Like Tatanis and I, we are very different. We are almost polar opposites of each other. Um, but the most important thing is uh, we want to acknowledge that everybody is different, and the way uh, we work, the way we uh, do things are very different from one another and how we deal with things are also different from one another. Um, so what we want to start the workshop with this, uh, you know, setting the tone that uh, everybody is different and what we want to encourage is um, to, uh, to, to complement each other, to embrace diversity and, and to be inclusive in our, uh, you know, in our discussion, to listen to one another. Um, because we believe that uh, diversity encourages, uh, you know, growth uh, and, um, you know, you, you get to learn from each other more by understanding individual differences. Um, so this is what we want to encourage um, throughout the session as well as, uh, you know, during the workshop where you are discussing with your friends. Um, yeah, we try to listen to one another and try to, you know, um, build a supportive climate and um, to, to acknowledge the different views that you know, one might have uh, and don't just dismiss uh, others just because you're the center line, uh, of attention, your, your views are not always right. Uh, you must also learn to listen to the, the others as well, uh, the loyal friends, the careful plodder. Um, and, and what we want to do is try and celebrate uh, you know, our differences and learn from each other, okay? So that's um, basically uh, sort of the introduction uh, or the icebreaker. So now that everybody uh, get to know a little bit of one another and see, you know, the kind of uh, uh, the different sides of one another, um, we'll go straight to the next uh, or the main part of this workshop, which is uh, learning about C40 as well as uh, health communication. But before that, uh, just to set an expectations or just to explain to you what to expect in this training. Um, so these are the three objectives that we have set out uh, for all of you. Um, and uh, the first one is we want uh, all the workshop participants to have an increased understanding of C4D and an increased belief in uh, you know, C4D's role in influencing health behaviors you know, by the end of this tomorrow. Um, we also hope that all our participants would be able to appraise different theoretical frameworks. So don't be scared. Uh, I mean, we're not going to bore you to death with theories and you know conceptual frameworks. No, um, but we want to to introduce uh, some of the approaches, some of the um, concepts that is being used in C4D to develop uh, you know behavioral change communication strategies. Um, and we hope that you can see how does this, uh, you know, framework can be utilized in your work later on. Um, and the third uh, objective that we have set for you all today is to be able to identify different strategies and approaches uh, to promote positive individual and community behavior change. Okay, um, so uh, it's going to be a very engaging and um, interactive session. So I encourage you all to be active uh, and but you know, really participate in all the activities. Uh, and how we have designed this workshop is uh, we will have, you know, some parts, uh, lectures, um, but it's going to be an interactive lecture. So we welcome you all to contribute to, you know, unmute yourself and to ask questions throughout. Um, we also have energizers in between because 
you know, it's an online course, online workshop, and we are here the whole day, not just on this workshop, but we also have other sessions later on and tomorrow as well and on the third day as well. Um, so it will be quite uh, mentally challenging for all of us. So we definitely will have that energizers and breaks in between. Um, so you all can go stretch and go, you know, toilet breaks and grab something to eat. Um, we also have uh, group activities at each session. Um, so all of you are expected to, uh, to share, uh, to discuss and also share to the larger group. Um, basically to just apply what we have actually shared in the in the lecture component um, uh, in, in the session. And um, we also uh, uh, plan for sharing session presentations for all of you um, to do at some, uh, some, some exercises that we have planned. Okay. And at the end, uh, we'll do a debrief and also a reflection of the whole uh, workshop. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can we go to the next uh, slide? Okay, so um, it, this workshop will be uh, you know, conducted in two days. There will be uh, two hours of session for today and three hours of session tomorrow. So on today's session, we will talk about C4D, the definition of C4D, um, you know, uh, what is SBTT in health, uh, we also wanted to look at the socio-ecological model uh, framework um, for communication scholars here. Maybe SEM is more um, familiar, you're more familiar with the acronym SEM with structure equa equation modeling, but that is not what we're learning today. Uh, what we're learning is the socio-ecological model. Um, and uh, we want to look at how this framework relates to health ecosystem. Um, and on day two, we will uh, go to uh, looking at uh, situation analysis, uh, message strategy, as well as communication content and message development. And all of our uh, topics uh, for these two days will be, um, you know, uh, more focused to the health uh, context, health promotion context. Um, and our, all our examples and our exercise will be, um, you know, more and more uh, touching on all those, uh, all the health issues as well, okay? All right, okay, uh, yeah, uh, welcome Darajat, I just saw you, okay, from State Islamic University, Indonesia. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining. To those who just joined in, we, we had a, you know, um, introduction session with everybody, but don't worry. I think we all can get to know each other later on in the workshop. Um, but what I uh, I see that we are actually very diverse, not just, uh, you know, um, um, in terms of character, but we are also diverse in terms of our localities, our cultures. We have people from China, we have people from Indonesia, we also have, uh, you know, um, people from the um, African continent uh, who are studying here or maybe, you know, wherever you are. Um, it's very nice to see a mix of international um, participants in this workshop. Um, and we hope that uh, you all, uh, we, we, we can learn from each other actually and, and, and uh, benefit from each other. Okay, uh, next we would have a break. Is that right, Sakti? All right, Dr. Uh, next, next slide is the break, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> so we will have a five minutes break um, uh, and we will come back uh, straight on to uh, talking about C4D, the definition of C4D and SBTT. Okay, so uh, with that, we'll set a timer and uh, we'll come back in five. See you guys later. Okay. Cause my heart goes on bump. Get you out my sight, you're always just behind 
behind These thoughts across my mind Keep crawling back to where we last Left our love on hold I'm always out for more So what you waiting for? Wait before you burn me to the ground Please stay till the bitter heart runs out I don't refresh because our next session is about to get real interactive with Associate Professor Dr. Emma Mirzawati Mohamed with C40 in Health. Thank you, Kanisha. Welcome back. Uh, five minutes break. I hope you all get a good stretch. Um, uh, and uh, we want to come back with uh, a little bit introduction of all this uh, of the C40, some uh, you know, basic concepts. Uh, and we're going to go into the SEM as a theoretical uh, model that we are going to look at. 
uh, and how does SEM uh, can, can be utilized in health. Um, so uh, I think that some of us here have some background uh, in C4D. I, I can see that some of us here are actually uh, fellows at their own C4D centers in their own universities. Some of you all are health communication researchers. Some of you all are, you know, um, health communication PhD students, postgraduate students. So you might have some ideas of what C4D is or what health communication is. Um, but just uh, a refresher for all of us, uh, but also uh, as an introduction to um, those who are actually very new to um, C4D and HealthCom, um, we just wanted to uh, start to introduce start this uh, lecture with an introduction of what it means uh, and what the concept of C4D means. Um, so basically, uh, C4D is short for Communication for Development. And I think in, uh, in the uh, discipline of communication, this is this stems long time ago, since in the 1940s and 1950s, uh, where we look at and where we study uh, communication for development in different contexts, uh, such as you know agriculture, you know introducing how uh, development in econ economy uh, and social development as well. Um, so C4D is technically it's not a foreign concept to all of us. It's just that the name that we call it probably is different during that time. And it has evolved uh, in some ways. Um, and uh, for, for UNICEF particularly, um, uh, C4D is one of the uh, pillars that they use uh, to, 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 to conduct programs. And it is defined as an evidence-based process uh, that is, uh, you know, um, is, is, is part, is central to um, their programs and how they plan the activities. And this C4D um, initiative or C4D is actually um, utilizing different kinds of uh, tools as well as channels and approaches um, in order to, uh, you know, uh, utilize communication as a way to facilitate dialogue and participation among people, okay? Um, and it is an evidence-based um, practices where there's research, there's, uh, you know, there's, um, as parts of uh, um, activities that has been conducted before and it has been proven uh, uh, to be successful in programs and it could lead to behavioral change at the end. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, what we want to achieve is this positive uh, you know, social and behavioral change. And for health communication, we are more focused on, you know, promoting um, positive, you know, health behaviors uh, in communities, uh, in, in, you know, society, and to, to develop our nation. So that is basically, uh, you know, what C4D is. And I think uh, more recently, uh, we also call C4D as Social and Behavior Change Communication, as BCC. Uh, and this is basically the same thing, where we look at social and behavioral factors. Um, that can actually motivate or uh, uh, nudge people to make um, to make that uh, uh, behavior change by use, utilizing communication. Okay, so it's it's kind of like a, um, playing with communication tools uh, to get people to adopt a positive health behaviors, um, and uh, it is very interesting because we are all in uh, in the communication field. We are all communication, communication scholars, communication researchers, and we believe that communication has the power to change uh, people's behavior, has the power to actually nudge people and motivate people to change, uh, you know, uh, to a positive behavior. And um, this is something that uh, I personally, and I think my team in HealthCom personally believe in, um, to, to highlight the importance of communication. Because I think as social scientists, uh, we don't get that much highlight sometimes, I feel. Um, a lot of uh, health work has always focused on, you know, um, educating and giving information. And while that is very important as well, um, there is, uh, I believe that there is a strategy to it, there's a technique to it, there's an art 
to communicating um, to get people to be uh, excited about it, to get people to feel you know um, uh, engaged with it, to to actually um, um, get get people to be engaged and and actively uh, participate so that it's the behavior is a sustainable change. Um, so that is why I think us, all of us here are very important as communication uh, scholars and researchers because we have a very huge role to play um, um, to, to, to uh, you know, to help our society grow and to develop um, and to, to promote all this, uh, you know, our positive behavior change. Okay, so yes. So, so that is sort of the uh, definition of what C4D. I hope I have gotten that clear. If anybody from uh, UNICEF wants to come in and uh, add on, uh, please, uh, you know, um, uh, do so. I, I don't mind having, you know, co-lectures as I deliver this. Uh, okay, so let's just go to the next um, slide. Okay. So um, for UNICEF, right, there's, there's, there's also a lot of other um, activities or other focus areas um, that uh, they uh, it apply C4D. So there's health, uh, they are also uh, doing C4D for nutrition, for social inclusion, um, for HIV AIDS, for education, for human, humanitarian issues, uh, to also promote uh, washing hands, and sanitary, um, also child protection, as well as uh, gender equality. Um, so uh, the, uh, the the focus, uh, obviously, for us uh, at uh, Healthcom in UKM is to apply, uh, you know, what we know in C4D to promote health. Um, and uh, in for UNICEF, this involves, you know, uh, partnering. The strategic partners um, and uh, UKM is be proud and to, to partner with C4D, uh, for uh, with UNICEF to to help improve uh, you know and and uh, to to help uh, you know generate evidence based um, work from through our research uh, as well as uh, you know giving trainings and developing curriculums that's related to C4D and SBCC and particularly to health um, to to help. Uh, you know, uh, address um, and in and to, to help address our health uh, condition uh, at the moment. Um, so there is, uh, you know, a lot of factors. Uh, we are all mostly a social scientist. We know how, uh, you know, social cultural customs, uh, our norms, yeah, um, are all influencing our behaviors and influencing our practices and health practices. Um, and what we want to do is through C4D is to strengthen that, um, uh, you know, that, that uh, um, the, the social and cultural and social behavioral uh, change communication so that we can actually strengthen community engagement and accountability in the healthcare system. Okay, all right. So next. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Um, Sorry, this uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, there's the photographer actually taking pictures of me, so I'm a bit awkward here. Um, so uh, right, so C4D in health. Um, I just want, I just, I'm, I'm just giving an example of what UNICEF has done, um, in in applying C4D in the context of health, and uh, I've uh, I've taken this example from Indonesia where UNICEF has provided a C4D support to the Indonesian Ministry of Health, uh, specifically for measles and uh, rubella program. Um, and it, this includes so many uh, different initi initiatives at different uh, layers, um, engaging with different uh, groups uh, of uh, communities or group of uh, you know, policymakers um, and healthcare providers. And we have seen uh, different uh, good effects and also give good impacts uh, at the end of this uh, engagement, this C4D uh, engagement um, for uh, measles and rubella. So what they have done actually, um, first, uh, for, for first they have they they engage in you know all these religious edicts, uh, the, the fatwas, 
that supports community mobilization around immunization, you know, and they use this fatwas uh, to to announce uh, to make announcement at mosque to so, sort of uh, um, tell that it is actually uh, halal and to also uh, you know dispel the myth that the vaccines are haram. So they have engaged uh, with the fatwa um, to to do that, uh, and and this is also an, an example of how they've. Uh, actually, uh, um, you know, you to, um, engage with specific groups and specific cultural and religious um, um, uh, parts that is, you know, playing a huge part in, in, in people believing whether, you know, this vaccination is halal or haram. Uh, secondly, they've actually tailored uh, communication content such as, you know, all their, in their mass media, TVs, uh, radio public service announcement, uh, through SMS um, from phones. They also use social media posts and you know other traditional uh, communication outlets as well, such as posters, leaflets, you know banners, and to to promote this uh, to to say that it is uh, safe, it is um, you know important. And it is halal, you know. Uh, so tailored communication to target specific groups, parents, um, to give uh, to 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 go and get their child vaccinated. Um, they've also actually engaged with influencers, uh, you know, public uh, opinion leaders, um, celebrities, doctors, community leaders uh, were engaged to correct misperceptions uh, that is related to measles and rubella immunization, and through this social uh, influences as well, they have uh, tried to raise awareness on measles and rubella, uh, you know, um, uh, vaccination and to promote parents uh, and children and students to get uh, measles and rubella vaccines. So um, in, I think it, as, as uh, you know, uh, we are communication scholars, we um, acknowledge that influences are very important. Um, as uh, the uh, public opinion leaders, I think one of uh, you know our participants here saw is actually doing research on uh, um, on uh, public opinion leaders. So you might want to uh, you know um, uh, share later on in your workshop as well. Uh, so on that, um, and another thing that they have done, uh, UNICEF has done is to. Um, have a high level advocacy and you know um discussion roundtables with local leaders uh including governors mayors you know regions uh, and this is one of the reason as well that have uh, you know made this uh, effort successful because um they have actually engaged with the groups the the people who have uh, you know the local leaders who have who can actually um make public advocacy um, and another uh, partners uh, or another effort that they've done is work with other partners such as the Red Cross Federation, Indonesian Red Cross for social mobilization in selected districts that was uh, low in uh, the vaccination rate. And um, as a result of all this, you know, multi-level and multi-engagement uh, efforts that UNICEF has done and partnership with different partners, um, they have actually uh, achieved 35 million children aged 9 months to 13 years in the Java Island were vaccinated uh, with uh, the measles and rubella vaccination. So as you can see, C4D uh, is, is utilized uh, in, you know, by UNICEF um, and it has proven the results. So this is one example of evidence-based. Um, you know, projects that has utilized C4D um, and uh, what we want to do in this workshop is to um, see how does this uh, can be actually applied in our context, uh, in Malaysia, in specific health, uh, you know, issue that we want to motivate behavior change. And um, I'm using this example uh, just to set to just to give like a larger picture a bigger picture of how c4d can actually work in health and how it has uh, you know proven successful um, and this actually um, 
uh, segue nicely with uh, the theory or the framework that I am going to touch next, uh, which is the socio-ecological model. Um, so the socio-ecological model um, actually it provides you know this framework to identify different partners, different entities, different individuals that can play a role to influence you know the group or target that you want to uh, you know um, you want to influence the, their behavior. Yeah, um, you want them to take the behavior change. So basically, as humans, we have different you know. Um, uh, different uh, uh, layers uh, of uh, or, or, or groups or, or um, that can actually help us, motivate us, um, but also uh, facilitate us to take uh, you know the, that behavior change. Um, and this is this happens in so many layers. Um, so let's just. Uh, begin with the smallest layer. So it's the social ecological model is is being presented as like uh, you know layers in the circle where you see the smallest would be uh, you know the, the target person or the target group that you want to influence um, and growing to the bigger uh, the larger um, you know community the larger environment that involves you know our policies that involves uh, you know how government uh, is uh, managing things how 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 public health system works so in health we don't just uh, you know live alone we do I mean humans we don't just survive alone we, we are uh, you know, we we have we are influenced by a lot of things in uh, you know the decisions that we make, um, and this is uh, one of the things that we need to acknowledge and we need to analyze uh, before we want to plan for any uh, you know C four D or any behavior change communication uh, programs. Um, so let's just uh, try to look at SEM uh, social ecological model here. And let me just help you to uh, understand each of the layers. Um, and after this, we'll get to see how this layer works in a C40 uh, in a program. Um, so the first layer is the individuals themselves, which is the primary target group that you want to, um, you know, you want to influence. So the individuals themselves they have you know certain sets of um, uh, 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 factors that they they they, um, they they possess like they have a certain knowledge about the issue they have a certain knowledge about for example a health issue yeah they, they have a certain understanding about it uh, they might have a certain skills uh, related to that uh, knowledge they might already have a certain beliefs or certain values that they associate with, uh, you know, that behavior or, or perception about, um, you know, health in general. Uh, they also have already some level of self-efficacy or maybe they don't. So this is something that, uh, you know, individually they have to improve on. Um, and they have also already a perceived norm of what is expected of them. Uh, what is uh, expected of them to behave? Um, should I behave a certain way? How do I, you know, uh, do I need to wear masks all the time? So these are all the perceived norms that is influencing our behaviors as well. And we also have emotions, our feelings, our attitudes towards performing um, that behavior, okay? So um, it begins with the individual because yeah, we are the one who make decisions about our own health and our own you know behaviors and this decision uh, is made um, uh, with uh, you know some set of knowledge some set of skills that we have um, you know certain atti attitudes that we have uh, towards an issue um, and also uh, how confident we are of you know performing that behavior as well as what we think others expect us uh, to behave in a, you know in, in in a certain way so that is at the individual level yeah so um we now try to expand a little bit to the 
the family and the peer network okay so this is like this this, this is a, a a slightly bigger um you know environment that you in, individuals surrounding uh, with are the family members the friends you know your spouse your partner your brothers sisters your cousins your machi pachi you know so and then you also have your peers your friends and peers can also be you know different types of peers you can have you know maybe uh friends at school you can have friends at work but you can also have friends in other social network groups as well um so all of this is considered as the family and peer network and a lot of our decisions sometimes are very influenced by you know our family and our peer network because they are the one who is very closely uh, you know communicating with us we uh, we often seek uh, you know validation and opinions from our you know social circle and uh, the, the especially the closest social circle that we have which are our family and also our friends our peers that um so this this group provides uh, some kind of social support in motivating uh, us to perform a certain behavior in uh, you know um um in uh, or maybe um preventing you from taking you know a certain behavior or or, or don't encourage you so this this group of people actually has some effect on how uh, you know individuals take uh, you know a health decision or make their health decisions um so that's the family and peer network uh, we go on to the a, a slightly bigger uh, circle which is the community so the community looks at a, a more larger um, group of uh, um, group that we have around us so this uh, might be you know um our uh you know jiran tetangga at uh, our our um, local where we live our uh, our neighborhoods our um maybe uh, the community the social community that you have maybe it's uh you know related to clubs that you are associated to um uh, or uh, so yeah so those are the community um group that you are participating in uh, and this can actually help you to um, build that um, collective norm that you share together yeah so uh, if uh, and and it provides some kinds of leadership to to uh, for us to have uh, or to motivate us to take a certain uh, you know um, behavior change so that is at a community level and at community level you might actually find um, some community leaders leading this uh, religious leaders for example um, uh, leaders of uh, clubs or community groups these are the people who are actually um, influencing us at the community level yeah and uh, the bigger one is the service delivery uh, which uh, in health context, I guess it, it relates to health delivery system um, and whether we have access to hospitals, uh, whether we can pay for our you know, medicine, our treatment, um, do we have insurance for it, you know, and uh, the quality of uh, healthcare system that is provided to us um, and how satisfied we are in utilizing uh, those deliveries, uh, there might be other options, there might be government, uh, you know, public health uh, delivery system, but you might also be able to access to the private uh, uh, health care uh, providers as well. So these are the service delivery that helps us to motivate or to, to make it easy for us to, to take that behavior change, or maybe not. Um, and the biggest circle in the social ecological model refers to the enabling environment which focus on uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the governing uh, you know um, environment that we are in uh, like for example uh, you know who, who's the government 
who, uh, who what are the policies that actually would help us, uh, for example, to stop smoking, or what are the um, you know regulations there are um, to selling cigarettes, uh, you know, and uh, for for minors. So these are all the um, enabling environments that could help or to to make it easy for somebody to change their behavior um, or to adopt a different behavior and also some of the other yes. envir enabling environments would involve our cultural values our religious values that we associate ourselves with um, and also there are gender norms you know what is okay and what is not okay for men for women um, uh, of socially <laughs> And uh, also, there's also media and te technology, whether we have the access to information uh, online, do we, do, our, do we know, do we have the access of skills to utilize, uh, you know, information online, can we access my, you know, uh, all this uh, vaccination, um, uh, or, or can we access all this uh, information to vaccination um, for us to, to take the, you know, COVID-19 uh, vaccination in the end. And so these are all the enabling environments that would help us to um, to to influence um, a, a person or the primary target group that we want to influence for behavior change. So as a communicator, as uh, you know, a, a health communicator specifically, you want to look at all these different layers. Uh, in the SEM, when we want to uh, try to um, push for uh, behavior change, because we know that different layers uh, have different kinds of um, influence uh, to the primary target group. And what we need to do is to first identify all of these layers in order to see how do we want to engage with different kinds of uh, you know um, uh, groups in these layers to help uh, influence um, the the target group that we want uh, them to 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 adopt this behavior change. Okay, um, Saki, can you go to the next slide? Are we okay so far? If you have any questions, just uh, you know feel free to uh, unmute and ask. Um, so for uh, in the beginning, I was sharing about um, you know the uh, UNICEF's uh, efforts to uh, apply C4D for uh, measles and rubella program, and what I've uh, done here is try to map this out according to SEM so that you, we we can see it clearly. Um, so at the individuals or you know the target group that you want to influence. Uh, which are the parents who are probably hesitant, right? Um, so who are the levels that we want to um, engage with, we want to reach out with, we want to collaborate with, you know, to, 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 to help them to, to um, provide a more uh, conducive ecosystem for the parents who are hesitant in order for them to... To, to open up and to you know get their children to be vaccinated. So if you look at the family and peer network level, right, we can probably see you know family members uh, who might be able to influence them uh, to uh, these parents who are hesitant. So maybe there are other family members uh, who have their children being vaccinated and they say, oh, it's okay, it's you know, my my child is fine you know um, and I can see positive uh, you know results from taking the rubella uh, and measles injections there's no problem with it so maybe you know um, encouragement and this kind of uh, support or, or would would actually help the primary target group to 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 get their child uh, vaccinated maybe they are um, Maybe we are in a like for for example for our uh, you know um, in Malaysia in in our social culture context we often to listen to our elderly so maybe the grandparents are the one who would be able to persuade uh, you know the parents to to take their child uh, to to get this vaccination so 
identifying you know who are the key family members who are you know the, the peers of these parents who are hesitant or you know who are, are the social support that these parents are you know um are in would be able to uh, by partnering with them and by 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 you know getting them to also influence uh, these family members then the parents could also be influenced as well so um i have uh i have actually um learned about you know some other projects uh, uh in different communities where um programs uh or, or campaign managers actually engage with uh, the grandparents in order to influence the parents because the parents will then listen to the grandparents so whatever the grandparents says then the parents have to listen to them uh, so they have actually gone through that level so instead of right away influencing the parents or communicating with the parents they are actually engaging with the grandparents because you know once you hold the grandparents the grandparents can influence the parents to to take uh, you know that decision so that's that's one way of uh, looking at it um now let's just go to the the bigger uh, circle which is the community the influencers the community and religious leaders so you see already in uh, the example that uh, I've given earlier, that they, uh, you know, UNICEF engages with um, religious leaders at the mosque, you know, having uh, announcement, announcement at the mosque, trying to debunk myths about, you know, uh, measles and rubella being haram and not halal. So these are all, you know, community influencers that actually have, uh, you know, um, a big role to play in 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 promoting a certain health behaviors and uh, we want to also look at them as a, a group that can influence our primary target group yeah uh, the next circle is the service delivery so unicef has also uh, tailored their media content uh, on different platforms on social media on you know traditional media as well but not just variety of uh, you know different platforms but also the content must be tailored to uh, the the group that they want to influence so this is where us communication scholars play a role here to tailor our messages uh, to know to really understand who our audiences and tailor our messages uh, you know to fit to our audience Okay, uh, and the last part is the en enabling environment, which is the high level advocacy with local leaders, including governors and mayors, uh, which uh, UNICEF has done um, by talking, by having round tables, by having discussions, uh, because these are the people who will, uh, who are involved with policy making, who are involved with, you know, who has um, the, the means to make it easy um for or programs that could help uh, target the primary group uh, of people that you want to you want you want to change so yes um so amalina asks would the media communication tailored to how can people access the services yes uh, i think as uh, media communication scholars we all know that there's no one size fits all when it comes to media uh, platforms uh, and uh, the most important thing is to really understand who do you want to uh, reach to. So if let's say uh, you want to reach to the younger group, you go on social media and but then social media, there's also different kinds of social media. And how do you want to communicate? We have a different kind of tone and language to it. So it is very, uh, you know, very important to be um, to be aware of that when we are planning. And to obviously have a um, test market <laughs> to, to really understand our audience before we craft uh, the uh, the messages, uh, you know, then only you would be able to come up with a proper intervention through media messages. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, are we okay so far with this? Yeah. So everybody's clear on what SEM is. And how do we want to um, use SEM as a pro framework to influence, uh, you know, individual or primary target groups? Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, 
uh, what we want to do, I think uh, I have uh, um, I, I have uh, talked quite a bit already. So what I want to, you all to do is we have an activity. Um, so what we will do now is uh, for you all to apply that what I have uh, shared earlier about SEM. Um, and uh, you all will be divided to smaller groups. We will have five groups. And um, you, you will have 20 minutes to do discussion. And then after that, we'll come back in the, to the main room to do the presentation. And everybody will, will need to, uh, you know, um, uh, to, 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 to present. What I would uh, encourage you all to do is to already, already decide who's going to be presenting. Uh, so that, uh, you know, when we come back, we know who, who needs to prepare to present. And if possible, um, you know, we get different people to present every, every uh, time. We will be staying in the same group. So if you are in group one, you will most likely be in group one as well uh, in day two. Uh, because the, the, the activities that we have planned actually relates to one another. So the one that you have developed today, you would actually expand uh, in the uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, 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 this uh, group sessions as well okay um so uh so that's the the, the mechanics or how uh, the groups and the presentation will be uh, conducted but in terms of the content so what we want you all to do is um, each group will be given an issue okay we have already put up in a slide chat slide um, and all of the groups will get one uh, facilitator to help them um, um, guide your discussion and how to fill in the template that we have provided. So uh, based on the issue that was given to you in your group, we want to for you to uh, uh, you know discuss who are the key players in the different layers of the uh, you know SEM that we have uh, that I have shared earlier. Okay. So looking back at the issue that is given to you and you are given also a behavioral goal or the behavioral uh, change that we want to achieve uh, with this primary target. Um, and we want you all to identify who are the key players in the different layers of the SEM group that can actually influence uh, you to help this target group achieve that behavioral goal, okay? Are we clear so far? Okay, so um, Sakti has provided uh, a link to a Google presentation uh, and group one will do uh, slide one, group two will do slide two, group five will be do, doing slide five. Uh, and we, uh, and uh, so that we have only one, one file to present and uh, we'll get uh, Sakti or uh, to, to share the slides when we come back. Uh, but just set, um, yeah. So let's, uh, we have 20 minutes for this. Um, yeah, let's come back at 12.05. 12 12.05. Uh, and um, Alif will be dividing the groups now. So you all will be uh, seeing your selection of groups. And then, yeah, you can ask for more time. Just let uh, your facilitators know and they will let us know. So you guys can okay, move to your rooms now.
Is Kevin? Oh, okay. Everybody's back in the main room. Because <laughs> I was checking, uh, I uh, there were some groups who were asking for extra time. But I guess you all are okay. Uh, Marina, your group are okay? Well, we didn't complete it all, but yeah, we, we get the ball rolling um, for the discussion. All right. Okay. No worries. I mean, we're not going to evaluate you all <laughs> or give any grades for this exercise, so don't worry. Um, but uh, I, I hope that the discussion was uh, was good uh, and you get to see how different, how SEM has worked uh, in your own, uh, you know, issue. And what we'll do now is we'll have a sharing session uh, of what you have discussed. I hope you all have uh, decided who's going to present. So uh, Sakti will share the screen and then uh, we'll uh, straight away um, invite group one uh, to, to, to present. What we want to do is probably have a peer, uh, peer feedback from our friend's presentation. So group two, prepare a question for group one. Group three, we'll prepare a question for group two. And group four, we'll prepare a question for group three. Group five, we'll prepare a question for group four. And group one, prepare a question for group five. Okay? Great. Okay, so we're going to have um, uh, three, four minutes for each group to present. So who's going to present for the first uh, first group? Um, sorry, Dota, I have to jump in. So just a quick update for uh, once uh, the timer has been set for the presenter, after three minutes, I will announce that the time is up um, in order for us to keep track of the timing. Uh, but if you need more time, just feel free to, you know, sort of let us know. Um, FYI, thank you. Thanks, Alif. Okay, so Alif is going to uh, keep the time. Um, but obviously, if we, we you need one minute extra, it's fine, I guess. Um, so let's let's uh, let's go on to group one. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, just Winder here, presenting for group one. Um, in our group we had Elizabeth, Lynn, and Suguna. Okay. So the issue is COVID nineteen vaccination for children, and then with the um, aim of getting parents to register their children for vaccination. And the target group are the parents. Lah. Okay, so for the family and peer networks, we, we thought of the grandparents, um, specifically the grandmother, and then colleagues of, you know, the parents' colleagues who also influence quite a lot, uh, friends, their friends, uh, spouse. The reason we put spouse is because, you know, maybe the mother is okay with it, but the father is not, and the other way around. And also their children. This is for the older children, lah, the teenagers, yeah? So the teenagers may or may not want to be vaccinated. And then a community, um, there's a lot of conversation around religious organizations and influence and all that. So we put that in. And then also, you know, just getting advice from family doctors or other people in the health field. Um, influencers, you know, people on social media and all that, uh, because this is also playing quite a, quite a big role. Um, if people are not even on like say Facebook and, and stuff, but people are sharing on WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, and also of course they're teachers and then you have your PIBG, your parents teachers association, your parents groups at schools. And then Lynn mentioned that in China, like governors and all are very, um, they, they do have a strong uh, influence on, on parents. Um, so also political leaders like here, the elected reps and stuff. And then for service delivery, definitely the hospitals and uh, the private clinics, which are providing the excess now. PPVs, we know there are not many left now, but there are still some. And then, um, of course, employers. You know, if the employers allow a day off for, for the parents to go and get uh, their children vaccinated. And then transport services, like in rural areas um, or in places where people just don't, you know, cannot afford to go out. Sometimes we think people can just pay like 30 ringgit to go out, but not everybody has that 30 ringgit. And then also community organizations and NGOs outreach, you know, to actually go to where um, the, the children are. And then um, the uh, enabling environment, like uh, company policy so that the parents can actually go and you know like what I mentioned just now so that the parents can actually go and send their children for vaccination 
And then, uh, of course, the Ministry of Education, what, what their policies are, such as if they make child vaccinations mandatory and then at the same time accessible. And then the Ministry of Health, its role of um, approving vaccines for children. So that's um, what we have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jess. Uh, just on time. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Okay. Uh, all right. So can 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 I have group two to comment uh, or ask questions? Anybody from group two? Di group two mana geng geng Aini? Ah, dia dah tu. Jam sari mana ni? <laughs> okay. Um. And I thought, okay, this is on the issue of COVID-19 vaccination for children. Um, I think whatever that had been presented, just I think that's that's great because I, I like this idea on this uh, service delivery. So we have this access from, you know, more access, the better, especially in terms of hospital, private, and then what else? And then enabling environment. So we have the policy. And I, I, I don't have much comment, actually, but I think, you know, whatever that had been presented in the context of vaccination yeah, I think this is this is great especially if you get the involvement of grandmother grandfather just to show why uh, vaccination is important but they had lived longer enough to see where a lot of disease probably had died down during that time because of vaccination and then this is for me this is quite an important factor in terms of um, to convince all these young people probably like have problem in terms of accepting vaccine so they could be a good they could they could testify but hey i live longer enough i'm like almost 80 years old and i've seen that how polios whatsoever had reduced significantly because of vaccination so so that is what i i feel personally this is nice about involving the elderly here in family mp networks so anyone from group two would like to add as well <laughs> you know i think i had a couple of people in my group just now thanks diana anybody in group two wants to add if not, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Congratulations, uh, Group 1, for uh, really dissecting the SEM and, and looking at different layers on how, uh, you know, to get parents uh, to, to get their children registered for vaccination. Uh, maybe what I would uh, like to add is because the target group are the parents with children with health conditions. Health conditions. Um, mm. So they might have, uh, you know, specific, uh, concerns that other parents uh, who with healthy children don't have. So I, I think engaging with uh, social groups, like support groups, uh, with uh, you know um, parents with the same health condition. So let's say it's asthma, you know, children with asthma or children with uh, allergic reactions. Uh, so I think engaging with those kind of social groups would also uh, be um, helpful. So that they see, yeah, their 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 friends, their colleagues, uh, sorry, they are, uh, you know, parents of the same issues, you know, doing it and and uh, with positive results, they would more likely to uh, to do it as well. So yeah, so that's just just my um, uh, uh, comment on that, or just uh, probably an addition. Uh, but otherwise, this is wonderful. Thank you very much, Group One. Thank you. Next, can we have group two? Okay, assalamualaikum and good afternoon. I am Jamsari. I am representing group two. The members are Zaitun, Diana, and Darajat. Uh, four of us, fabulous four. Okay, our task is to, uh, sorry, our issue for our group is jump roping for, for women's health. Uh, the goal is to encourage women, especially those who are childbearing uh, mothers who are in the cohort of 30 to 40 years old. Okay, what are we going to do? Okay, we have already discussed four quadrant, family and peer network, uh, friends, influencers, on social media, and spouses. These are the, uh, we, what we think are very important person uh, to work with. And then community, uh, now since we are in the 21st century, I are uh, what's so not. We have virtual and non virtual community which share the same interests. Either they are involved in the society or any clubs. And uh, what about service delivery? Since we're talking about how to cater, how to cater the message content for different platforms. So we are suggesting uh, what about we use uh, the available um, platform, uh, for example, Lazada, Shopee, Decathlon. 
and also uh, this is um, the most uh, powerful media now uh, youtube and tiktok uh, i have i have an idea that this is going to be a success because uh, we are going to teach them uh, educate them how to learn jump jumping techniques which are not going to harm them since they are still uh, bearing children Okay, and nutritional uh, information is very important because for you to do this kind of exercise, you have to take the right amount, a uh, portion of um, food for you to sustain uh, this kind of exercise. Okay, what about the environment? I am going uh, globally. Uh, here I am looking for federal, the Ministry of Women, Family and Society Development. And then I go to the state level, Ministry of Women at uh, the state level. And also, this is very important uh, because this is aligned with SDG. I, I cannot remember which trust, uh, 17 trust, a health policy, and also national health uh, policy, and also uh, the advocacy of Malaysian nutritionists, uh, 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 people working for nutritionists, and on adv advising um, mothers on what uh, type of food to be taken and at what time and at what portion. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Josari, for that uh, wonderful presentation. This issue is very close to my heart. Uh, but before I start commenting, can I have uh, Group Three to um, to to ask question or um, to give some comments, peer review? Anybody from Group Three? Okay. Uh, can hear me right. Okay, I I uh, uh not come here to ask him the question, but I assume what the group two uh presented. We know that uh social media influencers is quite important to uh this uh influence to other person. I mean the third party. That is a good idea. Yeah, this is what I got happy about because I have my research also in in uh, social media influencers. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you were saying about social media influencer. Yeah. And uh, social media influencer can. Uh, uh, what do you think about where uh, Group Two has positioned a social media influencer? Do you think it's actually at the peer network or it's more on the community? Oh, uh, is a this one is a more on the community. Yeah, more on community is better. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, um, I, I agree. Uh, I, uh, firstly, congratulations, Group Two, for uh, for doing this. And as I mentioned, jump rope is very uh, close to my heart because it's a sport that I'm in love with uh, currently. <laughs> um, and uh, I uh, I can see. I mean, the comment that I would give uh, is uh, quite similar to Saw uh, in terms of the position of the uh, influencers on social media. Um, I think it can actually go on to the community level rather than uh, peer network level. Um, uh, the other thing that I would probably want to add is engaging with the, uh, the um, event, so sports event planner, like, you know, um, like, like you know all those runs uh, organizers so now they have like jump rope uh, um, organizers sports organizers um, and they are very good uh, at promoting and i think that is uh, one of the way that we can actually encourage a uh, woman to jump rope um, and also highlighting all the health benefits like you've mentioned just uh, jantari um, and uh, a lot of people might not know there's a lot of uh, benefits on women, uh, especially uh, for mothers at childbearing age, because it helps with bone density, uh, and it's uh, it's 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 very good uh, because um, you know us, especially as Asian women, we are prone to osteoporosis, um, and uh, especially because uh, during the childbearing age. You're having children. You're breastfeeding. Your your calcium is actually depleting a lot during that time. So jump rope is actually a good uh, sport for mothers, which people don't actually know uh, and it's not being highlighted. So these are some of the um yeah the health benefits that can be highlighted as well. Thank you very much, Group Two, uh, for that. Let's move to Group Three. Okay, I think uh, Group Three, I I. 
I volunteer to present. Okay, uh, uh, I can explain like this one. Okay, in this issue, uh, what issue is that obesity and the health risk? As we know that the obesity issue is a quite challenging in Malaysia also. The KKM always point out this issue. Uh, every uh, every year, uh, uh, the top also point out the opportunity uh, quite low about the knowledge. So our group uh, point out that the family and peer network, especially family members, can play the important part to teach uh, maybe teach our, uh, our our family members for start from young to prepare your your healthy food and um, what is the of obesity. I think a lot of people know the obesity, but don't know what the the sector can happen to our uh, daily life. This is a, a very important part. And then the community, we uh, brought out the opinion leader in the community. I think that now today, uh, social media uh, is a, can play the important part uh, in the society or community. I think the opinion leader can play the important part in, in this era, especially uh, Malaysia's plan uh, announced by, announced by uh, PM currently also point out that actually KKM or actually government lack of leadership in community. Okay, lack of leadership in community to help them to promote the healthy issue, help knowledge among us or among community or among us uh, on the social media. So uh, for this delivery, you can uh, say that in the target group is the office worker with a sedentary uh, job job. So I think that uh, healthy food, especially is a healthy food. As we know that nowadays we can order the, the food easily. Like crab, even now healthy food also got very, very much a uh, voucher promo code to, to encourage you to order the food. But actually, that food you order is healthy or not. Actually, I think a lot of people don't care about this one. So we point out that uh, uh, especially companies uh, can play the important part to encourage the your worker or cafeteria to provide the more healthy food in the daily life, especially when you work or uh, working in the company. And then the uh, the environment part, I think more suitable is the uh, PKM can play the important part to organize the program, especially the campaign. But the campaign, not only the traditional way, but also can a uh, uh, digital campaign on social media or can a uh, collaboration with the doctor. Because nowadays we also know that doctor also a part of opinion leader on social media. So, Sorry, three minutes. This is uh, what I present. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Tor. Um, for that uh, presentation, yes, uh, I think obesity is a very uh, serious issue here in Malaysia, <laughs> and um, I think uh, what we, I mean, what we are uh, hoping to improve is uh, to get more um, healthier weight uh, uh, among Malaysians. Um, can we? I invite Group Four to comment first. Uh, can we do two slides quickly? Yep. Okay. Group four. Anybody from group four to provide some peer feedback? Hi, I'm from group four. Um, so just a quick question, because I think, um, based on uh, so obesity is a non is part of non communicable diseases NCDs. So NCDs are rather not just simply based on non healthy food unhealthy diet, it has many other external factors such as environment, food marketing, yeah. policy, yeah. which um, can you somehow, you know, uh, elaborate further because based on the information that you've provided here is more specific on health and food. Is there anything that you want to add? Uh, we focus on the healthy food. Actually, uh... Uh, like what you say right now is uh, not only the health system, actually it's a uh, 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 sometimes it's environment. Yeah, it's true also. Environment, people, and then uh, about your knowledge also. 
sometimes about your knowledge or uh, you know that okay, what is the um, obesity about. But I think the knowledge is actually the important part. Like what you say, not only the healthy food, but environment, knowledge, and also sometimes uh, people also don't care about the obesity, the knowledge, uh, awareness, awareness, yeah, like you said. I don't know, I answer your question or not. <laughs> Thanks very much, Saul and uh, Aini for that question. Um, so uh, what Group 3 has done is sort of the overall um, looking at obesity as an issue and how to encourage healthy eating behavior. Uh, but if you look at specifically the target group that we want to um, influence or uh, are the office workers with sedentary desk jobs. So when we look at, uh, you know, office worker, we, we have a more specific target. Um, and therefore, like for example, yes, the healthier selection in the office cafeteria can be one of the service delivery. But um, maybe, you know, the, um, the companies themselves, you know, the having, you know, more uh, supportive policies to encourage uh, people to eat um, healthily, uh, to have uh, to choose the healthier op options, uh, maybe giving a discount, giving you know um, some coupons uh, to get to 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 encourage them to select fruits, then you know uh, crisps maybe uh, to buy that option, the healthy option rather than the not you know not so healthy option. So I think uh, in this. In this uh, case, uh, the officers, I mean, the, the companies the, can also play a role to, to, to uh, help the cell, the health, uh, sorry, the service delivery. Um, and Ke uh, June, hi June, uh, you're in. Uh, so welcome June. Uh, so June says that working with employees association, yes, uh, is also another network to consider as well. Yeah, because we are looking at, you know, uh, uh, the, the working environment and the employer here, the employees can play a huge role to encourage. Um, yes, uh, Dr. Aini says even the space of the office, the, the, the furniture maybe is... Uh, can, can we you elaborate this more, Dr. Aini? Because yeah, so when, uh, so, um, when I did my doctoral study, uh, I was in population health department section um some of the professors they have um station workstation where they do their workstation standing uh, so the furniture i mean the the, the pieces for standing working time rather than just ah, sit. right okay yeah. so, so so if we have more I furniture like to stand up rather than like us we're like sitting down all the time so yeah that's a wonderful uh, suggestion yeah i think uh, elizabeth has that in her house right liz <laughs> so you're actually standing sometimes while we're doing work. Uh, yeah, uh, that is a wonderful suggestion. Uh, uh, the, uh, Emma, just to add one more thank example. You. And uh, hi, June Perfect. from UNICEF. Sorry to be late. Oh, no, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I think another example that I want to share the cafeteria thing. Uh, in you know, it's proven evidence that uh, you know there's a, some we call it the behavior insight that notch. Uh, the humans select like a archi archi like selection architecture. So if you put a lot of salad and green stuff uh, in front of the, the like entrance of the cafeteria, and even giving them a smaller plate, not the big plate to dump all the food on that big plate, actually has a substantial impact to reduce their intake of high calorie stuff. So you, we don't have to really like revamp all the nasi lamang, nasi goreng. Maybe that's something we cannot deny. You know, like we live with those things now. So we cannot suddenly say, now Malaysia main food is salad. People will protest, you know. So first ever history in Malaysia. So we cannot change those like big cultural norms, but at least that's the choice architecture. We can actually relocate some of the food selection from the beginning at the end. You know, in the village brochure, you will see a lot of sweet chatelas because that's where, you know, your kids and my kids also find those sweets, right? So if you actually change those, even the physical space, we can also influence uh, individuals' decisions which impact their uh, level of obesity in the long, long run. Oh, wonderful sharing, June. Yes, 
it's part of marketing as well, right? Uh, putting certain things on highlight, uh, uh, putting on smaller plates so that people don't take more, <laughs> don't eat more than they should. So yeah, so all of this uh, would definitely provide a better support, a better you know, subconscious support to people uh, adopting uh, more healthy eating behaviors at offices. Thank you very much, everybody. This is wonderful. Okay, let's just move on to group four. We have two more groups uh, for presentation after this. Okay. Who's presenting for group? Um, I think maybe Salif, would you want to take it away? Okay. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Yep. Cheers, Haiku. Yes. Um, the issue at hand is depression among university students. And our goal is to identify signs of depression and seek help. The target group, university students between the age of 19 to 21 who are depressed. Um, actually, we realized that one of the components of uh, the model is missing, the individual. We really thought about it, and then we were trying to figure out where to include the students themselves, because students aging 19 to 21 are adults and should not be taken outside or it should not be taken out of the decision-making bracket. So um, for family and peer networks, we have friends of the students, parents, and then uh, siblings, grandparents, and partners, and um, the community, we have um, student club and associations, societies, classmates, fellow students, also, we have um, lecturers, tutors, and advisors. We have religious leaders. The lecturers and tutors are people who have handled diverse students from different places and then over, over, over years, and they understand the nature of students and are in a better position to advise students. They are able to see some of these signs of depression and then advise students or help students who are depressed out. And also we have community elders and chiefs. You know, people naturally belong to communities, their own environment where they grew up and community leaders and elders also by virtue of their long stay in their communities understands the nature and they have certain values and they understand certain things about um, young adults and they can advise them or help them out in terms of uh, depression. I think um, I've touched on the first two columns and my other colleague, my co-presenter will take um, the remaining two columns. Thank you. All right. Uh, so it's my turn. Thanks, Alifu. So I'll finish up the second final columns. So for service delivery, so it's basically any service related to mental health. Um, firstly, it's the health practitioners, doctors and GP. Um, and then with Malaysia, we usually go for doctors first, and then they will further refer you to the specialist, which is a psychologist. And then we also have the telehealth delivery organization. Like in Malaysia, we have Refenders KL, where you can give them a call and they will help you and then for the help, you know, give you some help on the mental health problems, mental health professionals, such as psychologists and therapists, and then university services. We're talking about university students. So university do have counseling or mental health services units. Um, for enabling an environment for this issue, we are looking at the members of parliament. Um, the policymakers, um, 
and national state policies, um, specifically looking at Ministry of Health, Ministry of Higher Education, um, local government, um, you know, more specific targeted area. Um, for example, you know how we have city of universities in Malaysia, like Bangi, uh, Sri Iskandar, so more on local government. The media themselves, they are an enabler of the environment. So hopefully um, their portrayal of mental health, um, they'll be able to normalize this problem rather than having it stigmatized. Uh, higher education themselves, sending the message that um, mental health is not saying it's uncommon, it's basically common. And then also the norms. I don't know how do you explain this to norms that should be sit. Um, sit probably want to explain further, but basically social and cultural norms on um, mental health um, that should be the enabler environment. Right. That's all from our group, group four. Thank you. Thank you very much, group four. Okay, can I invite somebody in group five to uh, give peer review or any questions that you might have? Anybody in group five? Who's the facilitator for group five? Can you identify any of your members? Um, Lariba, um, Kennedy, uh, <laughs> uh, if like anyone you. wants to have, um, you know, oh, okay. ask questions. <laughs> Malina is like the cikgu, you know, calling. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so the first presenter was talking about like the individuals themselves. So I want him to elaborate more on how the individuals themselves could help their, themselves out of this depression situation. <laughs> The, individual. Um, the point I was basically making is that um, the individuals themselves will first and foremost avail themselves for assistance. And also, if you want to know someone is depressed or not, you got to ask the person, uh, the person some questions. How do you feel and other things? And through that, when they go in for counseling sessions, they can be assisted in that regard. So I think um, they should be part, the students themselves should be part. Being aware of you know, signs of depression or when knowing when to uh, try and seek help. Yes, yeah, maybe uh, choice is, uh, for example, the ones group and then the um, Second group is you want to uh, reason is the yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Group Four. Um, yeah. I, I it think... is my opinion about how to uh, journalists is Indonesian from the uh, Malaysia. Maybe it is a very 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 different. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yes, of course. It is about uh, how to. Uh, journalists can to cover to activity and uh, uh, for example uh, yeah indeed, I was, uh, what is the meaning this then I didn't really get the last one Greta, if you could repeat that was that a question or was that a comment Okay, we lost you. <laughs> I didn't really get uh, your last, uh, your last um, I wasn't sure whether that was a comment or was that a question. Kennedy, uh, okay, Kennedy, you're raising, you, you like to add something? Yeah, I would like to ask uh, what's his name again, Saifo, was that? Yes, Salifu, yeah. Salifu, yes. Uh, 
if we are talking about MSc students, we are talking about this is the uh, face to face, so we are talking about online learning in, in the past pandemic uh, world. Please, can you ask the question again? When we talk about this depression students, we are looking at the situation as in a normal pre-pandemic, uh, global pandemic emergency or horse pandemic. So Kennedy is asking whether when you were, uh, you know, uh, conceptualizing this, were you actually having, uh, you know, um, uh, an idea about university students who are depressed during the pandemic, uh, you know, um, era, or is it uh, just in general? Well, um, that would depend on the prevailing circumstances. Currently, we are in battle with COVID, and definitely we will tailor it to COVID. Otherwise, it will be just the usual depression students do go through. Right. So if it is post or uh, during the pandemic, I think it is the responsibility of the lecturers or instructor or educator to gauge on the, uh, the state of mind of each of those students. Like uh, like when I'm teaching about 300 students, they okay. have to submit their assignments. Some, some, are, some are not aware that they are under this uh, depression, that we have to do a lot of prodding, a lot of nudging, have to talk around, sometimes even have to contact their parents. Mm on 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 their children's uh, uh, state of mind to 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 what to iron out what are the uh, learning difficulties during this pandemic thank you okay thank you thank you Kennedy for that uh, comment yes I think uh, all of us here most of us here are university lecturers and we can sort of relate to this issue um, because we do see that in the past, uh, you know, one, two years back, uh, we've seen how our students have been struggling uh, with mental health. And uh, sometimes we ourselves, we are not sure of the signs of depression and, you know, even the students uh, are not actually, don't, don't know that they are actually experiencing uh, signs of depression. And uh, Liz says here that uh, lecturers and tutors and advisors can be included under community. Yeah, um, and they are actually can play a role um, to help uh, students to identify signs of uh, depression and, and prompt them to, to take uh, to, to, to seek for help uh, to, for help. Uh, Sid says that uh, financial accessibility of mental health services. Yep. Okay, so uh, it can it can be put under the enabling environment, where uh, if you have more uh, you know accessibility to mental health services and access uh, financially as well to those kind of services, it will you know make it easier for the students to reach out. Um, and Kim says, uh, sorry, June says that um, just by recognizing their suffer, it can be a good start for them to think about their mental health. And Manina says that yes, and also facilitate students to be referred uh, to the right services. Yeah, okay, right. Um, so I think mental health uh, and depression is a very, uh, uh, still, still a, uh, a stigma. Um, uh, in our society and people don't uh, normally, you know, um, want to identify themselves as being de depressed or having mental health. But what I feel that, uh, you know, our target group, especially, um, they are in the age where they, um, they trust their friends more. They, they rely on, you know, their social network, friendship as social networks. 
So uh, having that support and also all the influencers uh, that can, uh, 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 you know, um, nudge them and, and say that, oh, I am actually having uh, depression or having mental health and it's okay. It's okay to say that you are experiencing this and, you know, there are ways to seek for help and uh, if you, you, you shouldn't be shy of uh, seeking uh, for help. If you do uh, you know, have all these signs of depression, then we, it, it can actually motivate uh, uh, you know, the students to try and reach out because um, that is what we, 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 we want them to do, right? Okay, um, for the interest of time, can we just go very quickly for group five and then uh, maybe uh, we'll wrap up. Um, yeah, group five. Can we have like uh, two, three minutes um, to do the... Um, I'll pass the floor to Lariva, who's going to be presenting for our group. Okay. Possible, just be brief, like two or three minutes, um, then we can wrap up the session. So the issue is traditional medicine as alternative medicine, and the target group is the elderly who has NCD uh, health conditions. And we want to get them to um, inform medical doctor if they are using alternative medicine. Because sometimes, uh, you know, they don't want to disclose that they are using or, or you know, uh, using alternative medicine. Yep. Can I have anybody in group five? Very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So our issue is the traditional medicine as an alternative medicine, right? So the target is <laughs> to, the target, the goal is to inform like your medical doctor of if you are taking any alternative medicine. So the target group is elderly people. So in, in this, the first, one is the family and pair, which is we think that as elderly people, perhaps most of them are not really educated. Most of them, I would say, because they will not know about maybe the effect of those medicines they are taking. So in order to change their perceptive perspective about these medicines and for them to be able to tell their doctors about these alternative medicines they are taking, the family will play a role in maybe by the, cho the older children will tell the parents how perhaps these alternative medicines could have an effect on their health as well because it may trigger some kind of disease in their body that they might not know of. So the community, the, the community should help in raising awareness about this alternative medicines. So like elderly people like to attend maybe religious events or some kind of event. So in this event, perhaps there should be an awareness raising about, the, about how these elders should be able to tell their doctors of any like alternative medicines they are taking in order to prevent any other like arising issues. So for the delivery services, service delivery, I think most of the retailers and manufacturers of such traditional medicines should be able to like make it very clear to the buyers of these medicines that in order like to prevent any other illness from arising, they should tell their doctors about any supplements that Sorry. <laughs> they should be able to communicate with their doctors about any other supplements they are taking before they start to take it so that the doctors will tell them whether it's really good to take or not. And also the doctors should make themselves very friendly and available for the patient to be able to express themselves and not hide anything from them. So for the 
in Elvlin environment, I think the Ministry of Health and the government should really take care of these issues. Like they should be able to tell the manufacturers and the retailers of such medicines to be able to make it really clear on the on the the packaging and everything. Or if someone goes to the pharmacy or a local drugstore to buy any of these alternative medicines. There should be a disclaimer that this is not like, there's not a guarantee that this is going to take care of your health issue, but you should be able to talk to your doctor before you embark on taking any of these supplements. Yeah. Yeah. That's all from. Thank you very much, Leraiba. Um, it's a struggle working from home <laughs> with children around, no worries. Um, yeah, I think a traditional medicine, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, elderly are, are afraid of disclosing this information to their doctors. But by not disclosing, then, they, uh, you know, their, uh, their medical doctors are not aware of what they've, uh, you know, uh, what their patients are taking. And this might actually affect or, you know, have an effect on the treatment that they are, um, you know, giving to the patients. So it is, uh, it is good that you've pointed out that, you know, doctors should create an ambience where it is safe to tell them that, you know, they are taking traditional medicine, uh, you know, as, as part of, you know, the medicine that they are, uh, you know, um, taking and the modern medicine that they are taking. Um, and I think also family, that's correct, family members uh, who maybe the children um, who uh, can, uh, influence or can talk to the parents or grandparents to, um, you know, to, to, to talk to the doctor about or to tell the doctor that they are taking alternative medicine. Um, and I also agree in terms of the environment, um, having some guidelines uh, for traditional medicine packaging and marketing uh, so that it is more um, health and safety compliance. Um, yeah, uh, yes, uh, that's right. Sometimes uh, they are, they, they, they is, that is the reason why we need to tell uh, doctors uh, because some mixture of the Western medicine and traditional medicine might not complement each other. So this is actually one of the reasons that we need to create this uh, safe environment for them to tell so that the doctor can, you know, advise accordingly. Um, so yes. Uh, wow, Malina says she has to create a lot of book on what medic meds your grandma took and hid it from her. Yes, <laughs> okay. so what, what we did was that because she took a lot of like supplements and she has a lot of medical issues. Um, it's not Parkinson, but um, another rare form of Parkinson and then that really actually affected her. So what we did was that we sort of like cut all the medications that she's taking, paste it in a book. And when we go for the appointment, I made, I, I, I sort of like, you know, took the charge of it because my mom is busy and all. So <laughs> I actually like show the, the, the logbook to the doctor so that doctors know what exactly medication my grandmother has been take, taking but you know in the end of the day she gets scolding <laughs> and all so oh, i guess yeah, yeah the, the scolding part is actually what i feel through elderly is away um so i guess it's also a good thing that we're doing this exercise to create a more um, enabling environment and a good a, a better service delivery for them to be more open so yes yes kennedy yeah, we put up like a cctv <laughs> to like and just tell what message she's taking yeah. So it is actually a family affair, a lot of family affairs, and uh, you know, convincing the family to work together to, uh, you know, um, to 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 help uh, tell the doctors that you know these are the things that they are taking, and you know whether this is going to be harmful for them. Um, so at the end of the day, it's 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 that support group at the very, uh, you know, um, at the family level is is very important. So reaching out. Um, to the family to help uh, to create that uh, you know uh, that support to the grandma to the grandfather is, is very important. Thank you, Marina, for sharing your uh, experience. Um, 
Okay, uh, so I think uh, we have already come to the um, end of our first day workshop. Um, and I would just like to summarize, uh, you know, um, what we have done here today. Uh, we have looked at uh, the definition of C4D and how C4D, uh, you know, has been an evidence-based, uh, you know, um, effort um, practiced by UNICEF. Uh, in, in, and I've shared an example in the health context. Um, and we have also touched on SEM at different levels and different layers and how uh, we want to uh, identify who are the key players that could influence our target um, group when we are planning for behavior change. Um, and uh, C4D uh, um, can play a very important role in influencing health behaviors uh, of our primary target groups. And uh, what we will do uh, tomorrow is we'll continue on um, discussing about C4D in different uh, messagings um, and strategies. Uh, but what I would like you all to do now is just do a bit of reflection. Everybody can just put in the chat box, type out, you know, one to three uh, things that you have learned in today's session. Um, and um, yep. Jan Sari says, as long as we stay healthy and active, we are okay. It's okay not to be okay. Yep. Share and communicate. Stay, stay mentally alert at all times. Lynn says, definition, example, and practice of SEM. Wonderful. Okay. So, um, yeah, just flood the chat box there. And um, thank you very much, everybody, for attending the workshop today. Uh, thank you, June, for coming in. Uh, I know you're busy. Uh, um, and uh, we will see each other uh, tomorrow again, uh, where Datanis and I will continue on our next session. Until then, I uh, have a great presentation at the parallel session later on after lunch. Have a good lunch. Take care. Participants are advised to keep note of their breakout rooms and themes for today, as there will be a continuation of group activities tomorrow. We have reached the end of today's session. Thank you very much, Dr. Emma, Dr. Anis, the team at Helcom, and UNICEF for today's session. The next session will start at 3 p.m. tomorrow, the 24th of November, which will be the second part of our workshop. And last but not least, thank you to all the participants for actively taking part in our workshop and we'll see you again in our next session. Is that all? Yeah, I think that's all. I'm okay. sorry that my cat. Yeah. Oh no, I was removing. <laughs> I was removing people. I know, I know. Um, I'm oh, okay. is Emma exited? Oh no. <laughs> she's, she's, no! Coming back. she's coming back. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. Alif, maybe tomorrow can I also be co-host? <laughs> all right. Yeah. Alif, are you there? Yes, yeah, so sorry. Yes, of course. I will put you tomorrow as a co-host as well. Okay. All right. We we'll wait for Emma. I don't think she was informed that our schedule was actually supposed to end at 12.30. So yeah. she overrun by 30 minutes. Uh, okay. I sent her a message. I think it might be quite rude to sort of jump in uh, during her talk and interrupt the discussions. But yeah, 
I sent a message on Zoom. Uh, but yeah, I think after she saw that message, that's where she's sort of addressing that timing matters as well. Okay, no worries. Um, thanks for joining back. We'll just, we'll just do a quick debrief, maybe until 1.15. I think you have to eat lunch or so again. Um, so how do you think it went? Okay, so anyone want to start? I know we have the time issue to talk about. <laughs> okay, so I'll quickly start. I think for my group, right? Um, uh, <laughs> um, explaining to them what is NCD is um, it's quite it's quite challenging. Even though, like I explained to them, it's a it's an illness that will not infect others. It's only you determined by your condition, and sort of like uh, comparing it to COVID nineteen because like that's the in thing and that's the easiest thing that we can do, right? Um, but again, I guess because the, the term NCD itself, um, it's quite foreign um, to, to non-health workers, uh, which is acceptable. So I guess instead of using NCD, we can use like, you know, specific um, illnesses like kidney failure. Yeah. Like I think kidney failure would be the best when we talk about alternative medication because we know like the harmful effects already. So I think that's, um, that's the way to go in terms of yeah. like getting people up to speed with the um, task. Other than that, um, my group is a bit uh, laid back, so it's like you need to like, sort of draw on them to, to speak up. But I guess that's that's um, that's all part and parcel of facilitating. So over from my side. Uh, I completely agree with uh, just simplifying because I think the term NCD wasn't really necessary for your particular scenario. So I think just specifying what the NCD is will cut out a lot of your uh, explanation time. Um, I think when it comes to group facilitation, I think something that I advise Sid and Amalina to do is just to have in mind what you expect the participants to come out of at the end of the day. So actually do the exercise and think of what uh, the answers are, essentially your ideal answers are, because then I think it allows you to better facilitate or to guide your group into coming up with sort of the, the output that you want them to, to come out. So uh, I think Sid, and I think Amalena as well did that. He actually came up with the list of all the people under the yes. SCM for today. So I think similarly for tomorrow, be helpful for the facilitators to have an idea of what um, they want the participants to, to come up with. So that if there's any awkward silences or your participants have no idea what you're talking about, at least you have any, some examples that you can give to prompt the participants to think along the same lines. So that's sort of my my tip in in terms of helping the facil uh, to facilitate the participants um, through the exercise. Um, okay. Uh, in terms of any other feedback, um, I might jump in here. I think there is a little bit of hiccups when coming to the breakout sessions. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that tomorrow what we we'll do is pretty much make the times uh, slightly longer and. If we agree on 20 minutes, we're still going to stay on 20 minutes. But if there is additional time required, we might be able to give like five minutes extra or so. Uh, then I can sort of end the breakout and then bring back everyone into the rooms. Um, um, so. Alif, I, I don't know whether you've experienced this, but I did experience this. We we had like a, a, a session where we set the timer and then the timer backfired. Mm. Um, I think to, to ease everyone's life, um, I know it's going to be a bit tough on your side. Um, you just don't don't set the timer, um, so that oh. in case we need more than thirty minutes, then you can you can just like move it along. Um, and then when it's ending, just close. But okay. it's a bit tedious on our side because we need to to have like a timer, right? Yeah. That we need to like manually manually yeah. look at it. Yeah. So that's just a um one one thing that I would like to point out, and it will make our lives easier okay. if we need more time. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. I'll just keep the broadcast messages open. So in that sense, I'll send the uh, how many minutes left to go. And then if you guys need, uh, but yeah, in terms of the timing, I'll just leave it open. So it'll be fine in that sense. We don't have to worry about the specific times. Sorry to uh, interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, uh, because actually about the timing for the breakout session, see, I, I suggest to Alif to do a uh, set timing because actually what I wanted to uh, to do is uh, we want uh, the one to participant um, uh, over the timing. That's why uh, we set the timing like in the first place. But it's decide for the team lah how to do it tomorrow. 
I think um, it's okay to leave it open, not set the timer because um, the activities tomorrow, the three activities tomorrow have different timing. So the first one is 20 minutes. The second one is 10 minutes. The third one is 20 minutes. So if you set the timer, it, you might forget to change the amount of time and then it will cause more trouble. So I would agree we can give them, we set 20 minutes as the amount of time because I think in terms of discussion, um, 20 minutes is actually enough uh, for the discussion. It's just that because Amalina had to do that additional explanation, it took a bit longer. Um, so we can keep to the timings for now, but Alif, just be on standby. If anyone needs additional time, just type in our WhatsApp group. We need one more minute or we need two more minutes um, to, to discuss. So uh, Alif, you just stand by. If let's say there are enough teams, maybe like, two minutes before the end of the 20 minutes, you just check in, does anyone need more time? And then um, whoever does, just, just highlight, flag it into the, the WhatsApp group so that, uh, you know, Aleph can, can sort of manually close it when, when we need to. And if you are done early, I think just come back to the main room and chit chat with the rest of, because I know it can be a bit awkward to sit in your breakout rooms, especially if there are not many people or not very many talkative people. It's a bit awkward, right? So um, I think just feel free to come back to the main room. And I think, uh, I think Alif will be in the main room, right? So you can play some music just to not make it so awkward. Uh. <laughs> On the <laughs> list. You know? Yeah. Um, Zaitun's suggestion on having that countdown because when people can see that their time is counting down, then they will kind of move faster. Well, what you can actually do, Alif, is is extend because you'll get a notification. Um, do you want to close the breakout rooms or not? And in this way, it's not like an open room where um, the the groups can't see how much time they have left. Um, but you say keep breakout rooms open when it threatens the, to close. I think the groups don't see how The groups time. don't see that. Um, yeah, they don't. They only see when it's about to close and you set it at like, okay, one minute, yeah. then they see it. Oh, but, you don't have a countdown but, in the corner? But my group, no. my group, I can see the count, the, the, yeah. the minute. Yeah, my, my you have a countdown in the corner. Yes. Oh. oh, okay. I didn't see it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you can see when you click all the participant in the, your group, then at the uh, above, the, you can see the minutes, the timing. Oh, can the participants can see also? Yes, the participants oh, also can see. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you want to, that's fine. So um, then Alif will have the responsibility to say, keep breakout rooms open. Yeah, and then um, yeah, gauge from that if mm -hmm. you have to extend the time or not. Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring this up again. Uh, Dr. Emma, we were supposed to end at 12.30 today. Yes, so the presentation took us uh, a lot longer than we anticipated. But yeah. the thing is, the conference participants didn't know this because in, the, in our conference, conference program, it should end at 1. So mm. they, they don't have that Actually, they did because when I emailed them all, it's 12.30. Right, okay. Yeah, um, but this is something that we need to keep in mind for tomorrow because the presentation sessions are very, very short. We have 10 minutes for five groups to present, um, which means two minutes each. And I'm not sure if we'll have any time for feedback uh, for, for that. No, I don't uh, think so either. I think the feedback, uh, probably the peer feedback probably took you know, that time because people were not ready to ask questions and, and so technical, then. yeah, technical, yeah. So let's just scrape off the peer feedback thing and just give our own feedback to their presentation. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of worried also because uh, if we can see here, let me just share. Uh, the discussion in groups for the... Well, the first activity is 10 minutes and then the presentation is 10 minutes. If we overrun in terms of discussion, uh, we can use this one here <laughs> um, to kind of gauge. Uh, um, I'm wondering, do you want to do all, all um, discussion and presentation or do you want to do all the presentations at the end? Would that be more efficient? Yeah, so meaning that they could have the time to do discussion and uh, fill in the template. 
-hmm. but only do the presentation at the end for everything. Because I 